Sup nerds, I'm Tom. And I'm Aaron. My friends used to call me Bob back in uh, middle school, and I don't know if it was because they thought I was chill or just because, you know. And today we're just chilling. <laughs> yeah, that was stupid. <laughs> This game, its name is kind of like, you know, silly, you know, the art of chill game. But really, you can kind of just like chill and play this game. Like, it's a very casual set collecting game where you can, you know, you can play it with your family. You could play it with almost anyone because it's pretty simple, but there are, you know, techniques that you need to actually learn how to do, which is, you know, one of these extra things. And, you know, like, you have to kind of, you know, learn to when to play your cards and how to. You know, you want to be a better painter than Bob. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, I would put it at like a Ticket to Ride level complexity. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, and in saying that, that doesn't mean that it's super duper, like, like it, Ticket to Ride complexity in terms of earning, learning the rules. But, I mean, even with Ticket to Ride, there's still some times when you're stopping and you're, you're trying, you're making strategic choices. So you're like, okay, so stuff. should I take an, a card now or should I take more tickets? Or, you know, there's those mm -hmm. things that you do in Ticket to Ride. It's kind of the same as this. There's... Points where you're like, okay, do since these cards are dual purposed, I think that gives even more, you know, questions. You're like, should I put this paint down now and put it on my board, or should I save it for, you know, its utility as a paintbrush, and try, you know, try and go off the top and get more more paint to actually make pull this off. You know, there there mm -hmm. are decisions you need to make. And you can see other players put paint on their boards. And, oh, clearly he's going for Almighty Mountains, so or maybe this, I shouldn't do that. Happy you know? little trees. The happy little trees. Right? Or you're like, oh, well, uh, there's no way I'm going to get the plus two bonus because Bob's probably going to complete that before I get the chance to get over there. So, you know, yeah, there is a surprising amount of strategy. I mean, there's still some RNG with the rolling of the die every turn and the Bob cards, that, that the chill cards, I guess they're called, that flip mm -hmm. out. At the end of the day, there's a lot more strategy than I actually thought there would be going into this. I mean, that's part of my judging the book by the cover kind of thing, but still, I was kind of blown away. One thing that's really great about this game is the fact that it plays really quickly. Like you only paint maybe, you know, two to three of these paintings every time yeah. you play because you can actually score a lot of points on a, on a painting, you know, depending on, you know, if you beat Bob to the punch or if you're just the first player to actually paint that feature. Or if you, know, you, you have those technique cards. Yeah, the technique cards actually, when we played the two player game the first mm -hmm. time we played this, those kind of like at first we're like, oh yeah, let's get them. But then as we started to realize how how powerful they are, you're actually getting you know, a bonus point every time you use this certain color that you mastered that technique. They're really powerful. There's actually one card in the chill card deck that like just like You got to draw points. draw a card per technique card that you had or something like yeah. that? And it came out late in game after we'd already drafted all the technique cards. So mm -hmm. I mean, if it, came, if it came really early and you only had one technique card, it wouldn't be that powerful. Mm -hmm. But that's the whole RNG. And, and, and it is good that you said, so in a two-player game, the technique cards become a totally different thing. Mm -hmm. Because going for a technique card in a four... Because I, I actually got to play two, three, and four players with this game. And going for a technique card in a four-player game is totally different from a two-player game. Not to say that you shouldn't do it. It's still beneficial to go for like one or two. But when in a two-player game, it was almost like the first couple of rounds... We're just, we were each just bolting to collect, to split yeah. those up unevenly because there's 11 of them, just split them up between the two of us, and now we can play the game. It's kind of what it felt, I mean, you know, we weren't, we were doing other things too, but it kind of felt that way. Yeah, it's like, oh, he took, he t he's, he's, you know, you're ahead of me by two now, I should probably get another technique card, mm -hmm. because if not, you're going to get another one and be three ahead of me, and then you're getting bonus points like every time you paint something, and I'm mm -hmm. sitting back here not getting those bonus points, so it's mm -hmm. kind of like, I have to. Mm -hmm. And and I, I don't want to call that a negative, yeah. like it, it's it's different that that aspect is different in a two player game. But it was almost more fun because then you know I play something and be like and I get plus one for this and plus one for that and plus one for that and it really changed the decisions I was going to make because ooh even though wondrous waters is a plus two if I do it first well hell I've got three of the things for almighty mountains so that's even better for me you know I really liked that the two player game. I almost said variant because it felt like a variant. I liked how in playing two players, we played it differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the but, strategy is definitely different. And and that is a, is a plus mm -hmm. to me, actually, because it's not just like, oh, you play as two to three as well. Balance, no, two players is an almost more fun experience 
Uh, it's just different. It's just different. Mm -hmm. Not better, just different. Just right here, we'll just put some clouds. I know we've been going on about these techniques. There's actually a lot of other ways to score points. Like being the first player to paint any of them, getting those extra two points is actually very beneficial, especially in you know the higher player counts. And a, a two player can't count, which I've played most of these games has been two players. It still seems pretty beneficial to be the first one to paint a feature, getting that plus two points, especially if you can you know paint before Bob gets there and get even more bonus points. I played this with my girlfriend, uh, Rachel, and she, you know, she's still kind of an intro game. She likes lighter games and this, she loved this. Like, you know, being there and collecting cards, there's something about that for any, you know, even me as, you know, being able to play a bunch of games, you know, collecting lots of things that have multiple uses and like, you know, getting to put them down, you know, just like the you textile. You feel like you have so much. Yeah. yeah, you're just like, oh man, I have eight, all these paints, okay, I'm gonna put these down and then I'm gonna paint this and paint that. Like, this game has that part to it, which kind of gives it that novelty. It's like a 10 when you have a bunch of resource cards in Catania, yeah. like, ooh, I'm flush with cash. Yeah, and then, you know, and then depending on what comes up here, you're like, oh, you know, I get extra things when I paint with White, the certain, or, you, know, yeah. you know, the different, you know, you're getting bonus points for that, or everybody just gets to draw an extra art supply card. Like, you know, these are fun little game changers in a way that, you know, change it mostly equally. I mean, there's sometimes where it doesn't help you at all and it helps the other player. Yeah, but again, that, that is contingent on, like, what they have done thus far in the game. It's mm -hmm. not just, like, you know, you get to do one thing right now. Mm -hmm. It's the per it's everybody gets to do one thing or the player who has done X gets to do a thing. Yeah. So that, I think that helps a lot. Yeah. And because it, it lasts until you roll another bob. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes, you know, you don't roll a bob. You just roll, draw an extra card, get an extra action. So, like... Mm -hmm. There, you know, if you got an extra action plus the extra action card is available, then you're getting, you know, plus two actions. Like, you're just going to be like, oh, I'm going to collect all these cards, I'm going to put them all down, and I'm going to paint. Like, and it does, it is a quick and light enough game that if that does happen and you do feel like it's unbalanced, oh, this guy got just a really boss turn, he just, he just you know, prayed to our Jesus and, and got, yeah, like, you're like, oh, wow. You don't care. It's not like, you know... And you were settling in for an eight-hour game of Twilight and Theory, and you're like, no, I lost because of BS reasons. It's like, whatever. We're just, hang we're just yeah, having fun. Yeah, it's definitely a light, fun game that you're not you're not going to feel as invested if you get crushed, which you shouldn't. It's a chill game. You're just... Just chill, chill man. Whoa, bro. Bro. Whoa, bro. 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 It's pretty clear I like this game. Um, actually, it's kind of funny because when it first came out, I was like, oh, I'll probably like it. Like, I... I pretty much like every game. That's kind of my downfall. Like, it's hard for me, like, unless I really hate a game, to hate a game. Um, I always find you know, the positives of things. But when it first came out, I heard about it, I was like, they're just trying to cash in on the soldier, on like Bob Ross. It's, it's probably, you know, it's from a smaller company. It's probably not that good. And Big G Creative did an awesome game here. Like, they, they took a good uh, style, you know, that set collecting and just the way it works with the, you know, the way that timing and you know you're trying to like beat bob you know and you're, you're painting along and like makes sense like it's just it's well 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 done and, you know the the limit you have on you know putting paints on the different sides of the board and you know the dual use cards like i like everything about this game the, the only you know kind of caveat i would say is the card quality is you know a little thin and they're awkward size so you can't really sleeve them with the ultra pros or anything uh but they do have you know really cool components like this easel like that's really you know something that's unique about it um and you know the the little painter uh thingies that you, you, know, you hold your paint on whatever those yeah, that's are called, you know, the that's painter thingies you know um Nice job. I totally agree with Aaron on pretty much every point he just made, including the one where he said that he tends to like a lot of games, which, yeah, sure, that's somewhat a downfall for you. But again, you know, a review isn't just whether you liked or disliked a game, it's, you know, your thoughts on it. But also, you know, whenever you dislike a game, that speaks volumes because you tend to be so positive. So the fact that you were judging the book by its cover the same way that I did prior to us actually playing this kind of says something. Because there have been other games where I've looked at them, you know, like I did with this. I looked at this and I was like, mm, you know, my hopes aren't going to be so high. My expectations aren't going to be so high. And there's other games where I've done that and Aaron's been like, what? That looks awesome. So the fact that we agreed on that made me think, oh, maybe neither of us will like this game. But I was so blown away by how enjoyable the gameplay of this was. And that's really important because I also thought that they were just trying to cash in on you know the nostalgia and or just the name recognition of Bob Ross 
And I really want to, you know, commend Big G Creative for making this game as strategic and as, you know, well mechanic as it is, because I do believe there will be tons of people who buy this game with that presumption. They'll buy it thinking that it's going to be nostalgic or it's going to be real wacky. They're going to be, you know, they're going to buy it because they're, they're cards against humanity types of people or apples to apples types of people who don't know about this whole world of games that me and Aaron absolutely love and want to share with everyone. Or they're going to buy it because they're drunk college students and they'll sit down and they'll read the rules and they'll start playing it by the rules and then they'll have this glass shattering moment. They'll have kind of this epiphany where they'll go, wow, this is really awesome. Or they're here, they'll, maybe you're watching this review right now and you said, oh, it's Ticket to Ride? I played this game, I liked it, what's Ticket to Ride? And that will be your intro into this hobby that Aaron and I love and that we want the, we want the industry of this hobby to grow. And I think this game will be an awesome proponent for that. So thank you very much, Big Creative, for doing this. And if this, any of what we were talking about, sounds like something that you would like to try out, go ahead and click the link in the description box down below and get yourself a copy. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never be bored. Boom! City. Hey, oh. Bra, 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 bra. It's not how Bob Top talks. <laughs> <laughs>